Hello, my name is Troy Dyer. Welcome to part five of the Roman Cathedral tutorial. Let's pick up right where we left off. Okay, so today we are going to be working on the interior dome as well as the roof here. So let's, as we have done, let's start at this corner here and see what the details are. Now, so last time we finished here with the cornice of this entablature on the second section. And now we're going to be putting a roof on it. So we want to put a little, a little decorative finales along the side here. Like so, made out of diorite and slabs of cobble there and then full blocks of cobble behind that. And then once you have done that, we can start laying out the roof tile pattern. Of course, this roof tile pattern down here is exactly the same as the roof tile pattern we have done before with the alternating uh, copper half slabs and the dark prismarine or uh, something different if you are using a different uh, color scheme or materials palette in your construction. But this is what I have here for the reference model. So let's take a look at that. So um, you just do the corner there and then this section here and then an another one of those. And uh, this one here is uh, cut out a little because we have the, uh, the platform for the dome that, is it that uh, it's going to be sitting on is coming out a little bit farther right there like so and then we just have straight cobble there and this is of course right here going to be our center line for the front of the building there so of course the sections over there are exactly the same as the ones over here just mirrored so let's take a look this side over here so we want to turn the corner build a bit more roof tiles and build another section here and one long one here because we didn't have space to do any more because as you can see this is our other center line going down the building here. It's also at this point where we finished building our ladder that uh, brought us up to this point here. This is just a little passageway, a little circuitous passageway. We had to carve that will go over here and uh, you want to build this one uh, what, one, two, three, four, five blocks away from this point in here for the dome. Uh, so let's actually start at this point here. And I think uh, we built up to this uh, this lapis ring last time. So above that, we want to put a ring of uh, gold ore, like you see done here. Let's take a look at this from the bottom. Right there, and this, of course, uh, lines up with our pendentive right here. And then um, once you do one-eighth of this, uh, the other uh, seven-eighths are going to be exactly the same because it's just a, 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 a full dome, not a half dome. Uh, above here along our center line, right there, just marking that with the uh, with the redstone. You want to alternate some calcite and some glowstone here. This is just for hidden lighting. You don't have to uh, you don't have to have these torches here. You don't want to. And I think uh, I think those torches are actually fairly redundant because of the glowstone here, and of course we have our center line right here. So let me just give you a good top-down view of that here. I think the alternating calcite and the glowstone will help you count that out very effectively. So you shouldn't have any trouble with that. And uh, what's left on this section? I think I might... We need to take a look at this here. This is just, this is just the last little bit of our decorative acroterion on the front here. Just a little bit more Die right, right there, and that will finish that off. And uh, that's the in, that's the entire lower section done. And let me just give you a top-down view of where we started the whole thing here, so we can get a sense of how far we've come. Uh, I would say that we're in the home stretch now. I think a lot of the parts that require a lot of the materials are behind us. Uh, but now we have a lot of intricate detail work to do because we have the dome ahead of us. All right, so. We are at this section here. Let me just uh, make sure I slice that correctly. Yeah, okay, I did. Uh, so over here on the corner, we want to finish off our little, our little decorative uh, finials on the corners here. Like so. And then across the front here, 
just another little block of diorite. And then here along the front, we have just uh, two uh, blocks of stone bricks facing our cobble. Um, as I've said, uh, these we're coming into some of the parts where if you want to start leaving things hollow, like this cobble here, you can save yourself quite a bit of cobble off the uh, a very large bill that we went over for the starting materials. Uh, so let me just give you a view here of the tile pattern. As you can see, this is just our, our standard repeating roof tile pattern. And we squish it together and bend it diagonal on the corners here, like so. And then continue it around this side of the building. Now uh, you can see behind me here, we also have a lot of slabs of dark prismarine laid out, like so. And uh, that's because we're getting ready to finish off this section of the roof. It's just a very shallow section of roof. And where would be the best place to show you these things? Let's, uh, let's count from there. So if we have like a five half slab diagonal, this will help you with measuring things. And then we want to count out for what? These are going to be three slabs. So are these. And this in thickness is going to be one, two, th two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I think it's just a square, actually. Let me just count that with the uh, redstone. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. All right, so that is just going to be a, a big square, nine by nine, of dark prismarine behind that. And you can use, uh, you can uh, just, just fill this in right there. You don't need the measurements for that one if you've done the corner correctly. Uh, but all of the uh, all of the uh, cobblestone ridges here, you can see they connect to the ribs that we built already on the outside. So you can use those as a check on yourself to make sure you put them in the right locations. And uh, same here as well. I'll just give you a quick view of this little section here. And that's essentially all there is for the roof. So let's take a look in here. We have a very easy section. You want to go around every place you placed a uh, block of glowstone. You want to place two more on top of that and then two more blocks of calcite all around the ring here. Uh, this is done because, uh, as I said, we've disconnected the interior from the exterior. So in order to get the same lighting effect with all the windows on the Hagia Sophia, I have uh, put glowstone in these, uh, in these little sections here. All right, and also over here, of course, we have our, our little our little excess letter way is going just straight up, and it's going to go straight up until uh, it ends. All right, next phase. Uh, let's see. There's going to be one more phase. I don't know if it's today that I only sliced one block tall. I'll try to find it when we get to it. It doesn't, it doesn't look like it's this one or the next one. I'm trying to I'm trying to be on the lookout for that. Uh, so over here we have uh, uh, these little platforms where we're going to have our diagonal of uh, four eagles perched on the top of the roof here. A little a uh, little baroque detailing we will be doing. Of course, I think these are just uh, these are five by five platforms, stone bricks. And as you can see behind that, we want to raise our ridges of cobbled stone. Uh, one block over the dark prismarine we put down, and then in a checkerboard pattern, you want to put down uh, slabs of um, uh, copper, your, your copper half slabs. Uh, you can also, at this point, you could save yourself a little bit of dark prismarine if you want to just, if you want to underneath here, remove the, the sheet of prismarine that's uh, underneath here. Uh, for some people, dark prismarine can be hard to come by. I want to make a note of that for you. It's one of those places where you can be a little bit economical with your materials. Uh, but you just want to go through here and make a little checkerboard pattern. Uh, I did try and do maybe a little bit more complex roof tile pattern like that one. Uh, but uh, uh, th this one looked the best, I thought, of the various options that I tried. And a view of this little section here. Right there. And now we are ready to place in the foundations for the columns for the dome. 
Uh, so we have uh, we have our center line running through here, and then we want to place um, uh, the the column bases right there. Now these column bases we're going to be building are just like these column bases that we built uh, way way long ago, way back in part one. So we're going to be building some more of those, uh, but we're going to be doing it all the way up here. And as you can see, they're they're technically pilasters because they are attached to the ring of the dome here. Uh, but you just want to build uh, that one right there. Then another one here. And just for clarity's sake, I'm just going to I'm going to mark out with the redstone here where our pillars are going to be going. So maybe it will uh, maybe it will help you avoid any errors in the construction process. Right there. All right, let's double back. Take a look at this here. Take a real slow look. As you can see, the intercolumnation distance, or rather that is the distance that the columns are spaced apart from each other, is in general one block. However, uh, sometimes that looks like it increases uh, when we start uh, turning the corner here. It's really still one block if you count it this way, uh, but we do have uh, two blocks there. And here, of course, we turn the corner and start counting it um, that way. Right here. And of course we have our other center line running right there, so that gives us one quarter of the dome. So let me give you a good top-down view of this entire section here. Get a good tight view. So you can see what we have going here. Uh, it's just uh, seven column bases, as you can see. Of course, over here we have our little access ladder again. Oh, no, no, we don't, we don't want to go down. And then over here, we of course now we are finally working on the interior of the dome. Uh, so let's start here along our main center line and take a look from the bottom up. First, you want to build the ring of gold ore, like you see here. Just bend it around what you've done previously with the calcite and the glowstone. That should be quite easy to do. And then on top of that, in some sections, you want to have a little bit more gold ore. But on the corners here, we then want to start adding another overhanging block right here, right there, then three diagonal here, and then one, and then one here. like so, and take a look at that from the top down. All right, I think that's all there is to do here. I think uh, once we get done with the interior of the dome in a couple of phases, we can make more rapid progress, because a lot of the column stuff is going to be very repetitive. Uh, so over here, we want to have uh, first right side up and then upside down cobblestone stairs, just sandwiched on top of each other to create this little carved out platform here, like so in a big square, and just uh, make four of those in total. Over here, on top of the column bases we just laid out, you then want to just stack up cobble and then stack up um, uh, stone brick stairs facing inward like so, just like we did with the columns when we started. Now, in some sections, the stairs will cut into the cobble, and in other sections they won't, like right here they don't. All right, there's a little access letter again there for reference. So let's go over here, take a look at the dome. So here on the interior of the dome, from the bottom up, we want to be building this gold ore section here, and then just take one step out and build that section there. And then we want to have, I'll go, we'll go with uh, this lower ring, and then we'll take a look at the top. So we have two overhanging blocks of lapis, and then one here, and then one of gold ore, and then just a stacked lapis here. And then that was one eighth, so to complete the quarter, we want to do a mirror of that, which is a gold ore, an overhanging lapis block here, and then two overhanging blocks here. 
and then three more blocks of gold ore. And then on the top of that, we want to swing out and build our three blocks of gold ore there. Three blocks of lapis, two, then two, two diagonal, two and two and three, and then gold ore. So let me give you a top-down view of that there. I think because of all the patterns I have in the top of this, it's gonna make it easier to do for you. It should be easier to see, that is, when, uh, when things go awry. Hopefully that doesn't happen though. Uh, so over here on the corners, um, we are going. I'm going to try and give you as best a view I can of these diagonal eagles. They should probably have their own tutorial video, but they don't. Not yet, anyway. Of course, uh, they're made out of diorite and gold. This is my gold. Uh, this is just my gold brick texture here. I wanted it to like look like actual bricks, as once that way. But it's just really just blocks of gold or whatever type of material you want to have in yours. So on top of the uh, cobblestone stairs, so we want to just put another layer of uh, five by five of stone bricks and a few blocks of stone bricks here. And then this pattern of golden die right behind that. Uh, and of course, remember, you want to have, uh, you want to have them facing out, facing out in this direction toward the corner here. So do remember to rotate this when you build it. All right, back over here, of course, we have the same details for our columns. For the Corinthian composite order, that is, we have, of course, the um, um, cobblestone stairs here, upside down, then right side up. And you want to do all your columns like uh, exactly the same. And then just uh, put cobblestone behind that. And of course, then we have our little access ladder behind that. And if I do believe, I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, this marks the top and the end of that access ladder there. Uh, you might want to build this cobblestone floor here so you're going to have some place to walk around. And uh, let's take a look inside the dome now. So we want to uh, do a, another stair step uh, hangout here of gold ore. Six blocks there. And then here we have a run of four lapis, two gold ore, uh, a diagonal of three lapis, two gold ore, and just a straight run of four lapis. And we have the same deal with the gold here. And on the top, after you built your gold, we then want to do two lapis, two gold, two lapis, two diagonal lapis, and then two lapis again, two gold and two lapis. And then behind that, I have just uh, I've just um, uh, overlaid it with cobblestone just for extra protection there, uh, because if you if you um, if you want to use the top space and you crawl over everything and you miss a block, you know it'd be it'd be pretty easy to uh, to fall straight down into the cathedral. So so you might want to do that just for safety's sake. So let me give you a top down view of this entire phase here that we've done. And we will go on to the next one. Uh, start with these eagles over here again. I'll do my best to give you a slow, comprehensive view of these. Of course, we have some little golden eagle talons right there. And uh, some uh, golden tail feathers at the back, of course. But the rest of the eagle is pretty much made up of dye, right? It's just a simple uh, two material, uh, all block eagle statue. We don't have any stairs or half slabs complicating these. Uh, of course, you can always make them more detailed if you want to with stairs and half slabs. Uh, but in general, when, when I build statues these days, I don't tend to use those anymore. Um... So over here, we have, very simple, uh, we have now finished the, uh, the basis for the Corinthian order. So on top of this, we just want to put uh, uh, column shafts of diorite, like you see here, like we have, like we did down here for the front portico, all those diorite column shafts. We're going to be doing that again, right here for the dome. 
Now behind this, we are doing exactly what we did for all the other windows. We are alternating the uh, full blocks and uh, panes of light blue stained glass. Of course, if you want to uh, make your cathedral a bit more colorful, you could perhaps add a, a, a darker blue and purple and red. Maybe, maybe some green here and there might look nice. Uh, just, just whatever colors of stained glass you want to. You can make them all uh, ha um, uh, look unique if you want to as well. But for the purposes of the tutorial, so it's less confusing, we're just using one color. Like you see done here. I'll show you this from the back. You can see all the spaces, uh, um, places, all the spaces behind the diorite columns. You then want to face with uh, with cobble, and then in, in between those, in the air gaps, is where you want to put your windows. See, so we're we're going to have our center line right here. By the way, so you want to place those there. I like so. In some sections, we're going to have to have just a little bit of extra glass. Otherwise, the um, otherwise, as you can see here, the pane would just stop there. But we want it to continue on, so we have to uh, we have to now and again use a little bit extra glass, like over here, to make things work. So just uh, just make your windows so there's not any visible holes in them, and they should be quite fine if you do it that way. Right here, I think, unless I'm mistaken, I think this is going to be the diagonal. Right there. So once you have done everything up to this point here, we then want to just reverse it on the other side of the line here. That window there, this one here, and of course that's going to be our other center line, right here. All right, let's take a look at the dome. So we have uh, more gold ore here in the middle, and then we have uh, we're going to have some blocks that'll overhang twice. So you can see with the the gold ore we have two. But then we have three here, and three here again, and then two, and then two, and then uh, two here again. Well, actually, this is our diagonal. So it kind of squishes together in the middle here to give us sort of an, uh, an L of three. And then we have three, three, and two again to get there. And from the bottom, you can see we also have some lapis that's overhanging. We have two blocks of lapis that way, then a three-block L of lapis that way. And then sort of an M shape of uh, one, two, three, four, five blocks of lapis there. And then the whole thing over here again. Let's take a look at that from the top. You can see that a little bit clearer. And we can go on to the next phase. All right. A bit more of these eagles over here. Uh, statues tend to defy verbal explanation, so I'm just trying to give you as good a look as I can at these. They're not particularly difficult, and they are symmetrical if you slice them down a 45-degree diagonal, by the way. So what, if, you, if you did that, what you build on this section is exactly the same as what you build over there. I think you can quite clear, clearly see that. I think in this building by now, you picked up on my, on, uh, on my preference for symmetry. Uh, not not always, but uh, I I most times, especially in Roman buildings, it looks quite nice. Uh, so over here, uh, we can we can now start saving a bit of time, because all you did for the last two block section down here, you want to do it again, two more blocks right there, just stack it up directly on top of what you built previously. See, just stack it straight up. All you're doing uh, is just alternating the, the glass and building straight up the cobble and the diorite and everything. So now Over here, though, we're getting to the home stretch on the dome. We almost have a completed interior. We do have a nice oculus in here at the moment, though. A little, uh, little detail from the Pantheon. 
Uh, although we aren't going to be including that in this structure because we have a ginormous dome to put on the top of this. Uh, so um, I've gotten turned around. We want to face uh, face this way. All right. So we want to have a double overhang of six blocks of gold ore and then do that again right there and then do that again over here as well. And then in the middle, we are roofing everything off here with uh, perhaps perhaps if I, if I put some slabs here, four blocks of lapis there and then however many blocks that is there, six blocks of lapis there and then four blocks over here again. And you can see in the middle we have ribbing details of gold ore. They're shifting over one block for every two blocks they go forward. And they're meeting right there at the top. Right there. And then on the top we want to have uh, this pattern of lapis done there. All right. Not too difficult. I think most uh, most of the uh, difficult portions of the dome are uh, behind us. And we're going to be finishing that on this phase now over here. After we take a look at these. Uh, so, let's see. We want to focus on this section here. First, we have our eagle wings all nice and splayed out. Like they're just about to take off and swoop down on some unfortunate individual below. Uh, over here, of course, uh, same deal for the columns and the glass and everything. Uh, now, as I said before, if we were going to be building this as a real building, uh, we would want to have a third conical dome in this big space here. Because you might notice there's quite a big disconnect between the exterior column here and that dome there. And that's because this space here, all this, this ring around here would be filled with a conical dome, which would have sort of, you know, a, a sort, of, uh, sort of a parabolic shape. Of course, that would be done because um, we need something to support the weight of uh, the cupola at the top of our dome. And uh, the, the rest of the dome would be self-supporting. It would have a lot of it, it, it would have a lot of wooden beams and everything in here um, to do that job. So let's just knock uh, knock down the middle block here. Uh, so for this section here, you can see we just want to make a ring of gold ore, like so. And then at the top here, we want to have a little detail of a glowstone and calcite right there, and then just replace that block of glowstone I knocked out, and that will be the interior of the cathedral complete. It's been quite a long haul, but now at least you can relax and you're in the interior knowing that is finished. And we will move on to the next phase where we're just taking another look at uh, now the wingtips of the eagles on the side here. Like so. And of course the other wing tip is exactly the same. And for the columns and the glass, just two more blocks straight up. And you can uh you can slap a little bit of cobble on the top right there. And that will be uh everything in here complete. So we can move on to the next phase. And I think I think we're also about to finish these e these eagles, I think. There might be a little bit more to those. Actually, I think there is. Is this the phase where I didn't? No. Okay. So we have uh, these wingtips right here. Laid out like so. View from the back. Um, for this, just stack up your diorite, your glass, and your cobblestone. Two more layers there. 
And we will take what I believe is going to be... Does that finish these eagles in this phase or with England? No, okay, it does. All right, now we're going to take a look at the finished product of the eagles. So we have just a couple more blocks right up here for the wingtips. Right there, just like literally four blocks. And that will be these complete. Let me now back up and give you a more, a more complete and slow view around a completed model. So you can double check this. Of course, uh, this is sort of, sort of a little uh, sub extra tutorial because you can use these diagonal eagles and uh, other builds if you so choose. I haven't done that many diagonal builds. I do want to do like a full diagonal Roman temple at some point, uh, mostly because they're kind of easy to make now that I have amulet. It has a free rotate function. So I can set it to any angle and then get the building model that way, which is quite helpful actually. It, um, I never previously built many diagonal things before that because they were always a real pain to make. Uh, but when you have when you have good tools, you can save yourself a lot of time and the design work of these things anyway. Uh, so for the the column shafts back here and the glass, just two more blocks straight up there, and then we can go on to the next phase where we should stop and measure the completed height of these columns. So we can double check. It's going to be one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, so your completed diorite column shaft should be twelve blocks high. All of them, all the way around. And then on top of that, we want to do here with uh, stone bricks uh, what we did down here for this phase with the cobblestone stairs. You just want to do it up here again with stone bricks. And then behind those, we of course finish with our windows. So we want to uh, cap it off with just a big ring of cobble, like so. All right, next phase, we're of course doing more detail for our Corinthian capitals. Just like the Corinthian capitals that we built previously, we are doing that, of course, with the upside-down cobblestone stairs and then stone brick stairs stacked directly on top of that to represent our acanthus leaves. And you want to do that according to the same pattern that we've done, uh, done before. Down there, I don't think those are going to be very difficult for you. Let's take a look at that from the back. All right here. Just go around the ring there to give you another glance at that. And then uh, that's all there is to that phase. And then, of course, we want to finish off our Corinthian capitals with uh, coming out a, an extra block of uh, stone bricks and then putting uh, more stone brick stairs upside down on the top there to represent the very tops of our acanthus leaves. In fact, let me go, let me go to the, the front center line here. Uh, now, this section here, we just had to have just like one column over right because we should, have, uh, we should have two of these going into each other here, but we only have one column of space. So I just had it over right. This one here in the middle, it's a, it's a, it's a small detail. But because our columns are spaced uh, only one block apart, well, which is very close, uh, those sections uh, sort of touched each other. So that's one of the little compromises we have to make when we are doing things in Minecraft. You can see there. Sometimes we just have to squish things together and hope for the best. All right, give you good views in here. And we'll take a look at all this from the top down as we make a... Uh, as we make the ring around. Right there, and of course here we are along, along our other little center line. All right, so on top of that, we then want to put in a ring of dot right here. Let's start to mark our center line here. And then dot right there. 
And then three, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, three, three, and then just a straight line across the, the, sense, the uh, other center line there. And then behind that, you can just go ahead and fill that in with cobble to match the ring that we have behind that there. Like so. And we will go on to the next phase. So we finished our columns, and now with that little bit of diorite, we are now building, of course, the Corinthian entablature. Again, just like the Corinthian entablature we built down here, you can see this one's straight. Well, this one up here, this one is bent into a circle. And uh, this, this took some time to figure out how to do, uh, because doing that pattern alone is difficult when it's straight. But when it's bending around a circle, you, you, we have to, you know, we have to fill in some places and do the best we can. Uh, so on top of that, we then want to put, of course, our upside down stone brick stairs. Just make a ring of those and ring it all the way around the diorite and then build another ring of diorite on top of that. Uh, it's a lot to say, but, uh, well, it's, it's easy to say, but it's a lot to do. But you can see here, we just want to curve the stone bricks around as we go like so and then I think you can actually go ahead and build an, an, another another ring of diorite on top of that and then of course uh, face everything behind that with cobble if you want to all right next phase here we have our um, uh, so if you, if you went ahead and built that ring of diorite I talked about we now need to do all the details for the Corinthian um, uh, entablature here. So this, this is going to be where our center line starts. Right there. So we want to do the same details that we did below. You can start doing them, um, doing them straight with, of course, the, the chiseled stone bricks and the, the uh, cobblestone walls and everything, the stairs and the half slabs. Just alternate those. This little section is a little module. So you want to repeat that again and then again. But when we start turning the curve right here, we need to uh, push them back and start squishing them together. This is some more of that squishing I talked about. You can see over here as we meet, uh, meet the diagonal, that's going to be on this one right here. We, we, start, uh, we, we have to have a stair and a slab and then a, another stair directly on the other side right here. So the pattern... Um, it, it kind of starts breaking down here, uh, but when you look at it from a distance, uh, you don't notice it. So do your best to fill in the pattern as it's arranged. Like so. And then over here, of course, we have our other, our other center line right there. Uh, so for this, I think I think we started with this section here, in the middle at the front. But on the side, it's going to it's going to end with a, a half slab and a stair. Go back around here and check that. And make sure I'm not saying that wrong. Let's get our center line right there. Yes, okay. So I was right about that. Uh, so the, so that that little detail is going to be non-symmetric, kind of. But when, when you get to that, you just want to extend it all the way around and do it three more times until you made the entire ring around the structure for the entablature. And uh, in this phase over here, we're going to be finishing off the details for the entablature right here. So on top of that, we then want to, it's going to be pretty easy for you though, you, we want to put a, a ring of stone bricks on top of, of this little back here. You can see it's kind of hidden. hidden Right back there. Uh, on top, or uh, well, rather in front of those, we want to put the uh, stone brick stairs upside down in a ring, uh, like we did down here for these, except it's going to be a bigger ring. Like so, and then we want to bend it out for the cornice. This is sort of like a little a round cornice, which, you know, Minecraft, it, it, it can only be so round. In some sections, we do have, like, you know, extra, extra full blocks hanging out over here. Uh, but that's just how it had to be. So let me give you where are we at. So we're at the diagonal right here. The 
take a look at this from the top down in a moment. Uh, here and uh, at the front, uh, on top of the stone bricks, we then want to go around and put just a ring of cobblestone half slabs on top of that. And then immediately behind those, you want to put uh, the diorite like you see here. I don't know if we're going to need that much thickness of diorite, though. Let's, let's go ahead and look at this phase over here and see if we do or not. We might. Oh. Well, in some places we do. Let's just go on to this phase. You can see it more clearly. Uh, so you just want to put that dial right here. For some sections, I think I used a bit too much dial right when I was building the reference model. Um, but behind that, we then want to have a cobble, full blocks of cobble. And then as you can see here, we have these little two blocks of dial right along our center line, uh, which means that we're going to have these little, a, a few more of the, these little details right here we're going to be building. Right here, wherever you see these little li these little blocks of dial right, right here. So, uh, for this section here, this is going to be where we um, we're finishing the entablature on this phase, and also uh, beginning the first layer, as you can see down here with the dark prismarine of the dome. I know how far we'll get with that today. I'll have to see how long it's been. And, uh, oh, that shouldn't be there. There are a few, there are a few straight blocks of bedrock. Let's, uh, let's just uh, make, that, uh, make that cobble. There's no bedrock included in the materials list. That should be cobble. That's an oversight on my part. My apologies. Like so. And that's, of course, our other center line right there. Let me give you a good top-down view of this here, and it might make it a little bit clearer of how this entire section fits together. Of course, for all that cobblestone behind the um, uh, dark prismarine, I'm not really going to cover it uh, because uh, all, all, all that is is just uh, extra material to make the dome thicker on the inside. You don't have to follow uh, this pattern of of this back here at all, it, it's not really important. So I'm not gonna I'm not really gonna go into detail. I will give you a good glance at it though, in case you want to try to match it. But all you're doing is just just filling in the dome with cobble to make it a little bit thicker. That's all that is. Uh, ideally, no one should be crawling around there and seeing all that anyway. So let's uh, let's keep going for a little while. Uh, so here, as you can see. More decorative finales, like so. And a bit of a cobble behind those, because if you remember way back when we started, our dome has these, these cobblestone ribs, which separate out the uh, various quadrants and uh, sections of the dome. And um, you probably don't need that dark prismarine in the last phase either, come to think of it. I think you, you can, it's sitting below this here, so you can't really see it. So it's kind of wasted. Uh, but you can save yourself a few blocks there if you uh, want to take it out. What we can see here from, from our center line, right right there, we have uh, a three, then four, then two, then a bit of cobble here, then one, two, uh, two diagonal, and um, you, you probably don't need that there. That can just be cobble. And then two diagonal again, and we're just reversing now because we've, we've hit the diagonal. And then two, one, two, four, three, and over here is our other, our other uh, center line. Like so, right there. Not, uh, not, not too difficult. I'll just give you a view of this in here real quick. Right there, and we can move on to the next phase. All right, here we have a bit more of our ribs. Actually, didn't we? Did I stop it? Okay. Just checking. Uh, so here we have a bit more cobble detail for our, our ribs for our dome, like so. And then more dark prismarine. And, and now we're using um, full blocks 
of cut copper, uh, oxidized all the way, like so. Now you, you can wax them or not, it really doesn't depend, they're already oxidized. I'm not sure why you would want to oxidize stage 4 copper, actually, I haven't thought of that. I don't, know, I don't even know if you can. You probably can. Hmm. Oh well. Uh, uh, m moving along. Talking about a cathedral here, not copper mechanics. Uh, so we've got our copper there and our cobble there. Our cobble here, this is going to be along our diagonal. Right there. So we're just reversing now. This section over here is just a mirror. Of that section over there. And, of course, this section over here along the front. And our other main center line there. Not too difficult. It's just the roofs and everything, so... Give you a quick view of that. And we will move on to the next phase. So, uh, we've been... I think we can go for a little while longer. I don't know if we'll get all the way to the top of the dome. But it looks like we're going to need uh, one more episode after this one. We'll probably finish the cathedral. So that'll bring us up to, what, six parts? Uh, so, as you can see here, we've got details for the cobble and the cut copper behind that there. Like so. Uh, I did experiment with, uh, instead of the oxidized, with, like, making it the shiny copper. Uh, but it didn't... I mean, it, it, it looked good, but it looked better with the aged copper. So that's why I went with that material. I think I don't need to count these blocks with all the, the, the texture on the cut copper. It's pretty easy to see uh, what goes where. Like so. And uh, a quick shot of this in here. All right, next phase. More details for the ribbing and the copper. Not too much to say about it. We just need to give you a good slow look. And a, a quick cursory glance at uh, the inside of the dome here. All right, next phase. Over here. More ribbing and more copper. Like so, and along the interior here. All right, details again for the ribbing and the copper. And then along the inside here. And we will go on to the next phase here. More detailing again. For the, is this the phase where I, no, okay. Uh, so details here again for the copper and the cobble. And quick view of the interior here. Let's actually drop all the way down, take a view. We've got a really big octolus here. 
Gonna be a nice view in here. Though. And let's do another phase. Uh, let's see. We are right here at this level for the copper and everything. Like so. Not too difficult. I'll give you a quick view of what's in here. As I'm doing this, I'm actually thinking about... I'm actually kind of wanting to go ahead and push and finish this today. Actually, I think we can make quicker progress on the cupola than, than what I'm thinking instead of making a full video for that. So we're just going to go... Uh, all the way to the end today and finish this off. Hopefully I can keep talking for that. That's generally why my tutorials end up being uh, broken up into hour-long segments, because that's about as long as I can talk for. All right, next phase here. Uh, we are doing more dark prismarine. We started off with dark prismarine down there, but we're now finished with the cut copper. And we're doing uh, dark prismarine now. I'll give you a top-down view of this in a moment. Take a wider view. And now let's get closer in. Here. Now let's take a view from the top down. Right there for the whole thing. And we'll dip down in here for a moment. For that, I think you can just go ahead and, uh, and roof that central section over with a straight, straight cobble. Because as you see here for this section, all of our ribs are now meeting at the top. Like you see done here. And then I think I have, uh, I think um, that, that material is going to get wasted. So you don't have to, you don't have to put the, co uh, the cut copper there. Uh, but you do want to build this little platform here because this is what we're going to be building our cupola. On top of the, the, uh, the, the, the little bell thing that's on the top of domes is generally, generally called a cupola. Sometimes there are different names for it, though. Uh, so next phase here, we, of course, stack up a bit more cobble and then a diorite platform on top of that. We're going to be doing a, a little entablature, a very basic entablature. So it's, a, it's a very small version of the, what we did down here for the big ring. We're doing, uh, we're doing a very small one up here. And we're going to be doing another small one on top of that to finish off that there. In fact, uh, just, just for ease of, ease of, let me just, uh, let me just mark out the, the center lines because they're all coming together up here at the top now. So once you build just one quarter of that like that, uh, then build the rest of the platform like so. And then we will go on to the next phase. And the next phase is pretty easy. I just stack up another layer of uh, diorite and then another layer of cobble. And then back here we have uh, some obsidian. Uh, you don't really have to put the obsidian because there's no real way to get up to this little room up here at the top. So I'm not going to go into too, uh, too much detail on that. Right, let's go on to the next phase over here. Uh, 
so for this one, you can see we now have, um, we're doing really small versions of columns up here, so we don't have enough space to do some of the details. So we are doing just uh, straight stone brick stairs, right side up and then upside down cobble on top of those. Along here, you can see we do have a little purple glass behind that. I think because this reference model I use, this actually has the multicolored uh, cupola here at the top. It should all be uh, like light blue stained glass, but I forgot to convert it back so before I did the, the tutorial. So we're going to be stuck with it. But I think you can see, like all you have to do is just build one little pattern here, and then build the other ones the same. And behind here, you don't have to worry about any, any of the details. I didn't make a way to get up to the cupola up here, there would have to be, you know, there'd have to be a ladder that goes all the way down there to get up here. You can build one if you want to, though. Uh, but I didn't make one in the design. So over here, you can see on top of the uh, upside down cobble stairs, just put right side up on top of those and then build some diorite column drums. Uh, what, eight of those, like you see here, two by two on top of those, and then just fill in the windows with uh, whatever pattern of uh, glass you want. I think I actually used only full blocks up here and not, and not uh, panes right here. Like so. And then we'll, we'll go on to the next phase. Actually, these next phases are going to be easier to do uh, because we're just stacking up again. Remember, like we did for the big column drum down there with, uh, with the stacking up, of the diorite and the glass, do that again, right here. Uh, whatever pattern of stained glass you want to use, I'm not picky. Whatever you think looks nice. And then, uh, this phase here, I believe, is exactly the same one we just took a look at. That's the other phase I was looking for where I made a mistake. So, uh, never mind that, moving along. Uh, when you do like, you know, I don't know, a hundred cathedrals or whatever in a straight line and you start slicing them up, sometimes you miss things. And that, uh, but again, stack up your, your column drums and your glass. And again over here, your column drums and your glass. And uh, we've been going on for so long today, the world is not loading. Um... And now for this section here, I'll show you a view of the inside of uh, what I did with the glass in here. It's not really important. You can do something better with the glass designs in here. I'm, I'm quite sure you can. So I will leave that to you to do. The, the height of these columns is to be 1, 2, 3, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 8 tall for your columns. And then just uh, do here for the stone bricks what we did down here for, for the cobble. Of course, we want to make some more canthus leaves up here at the top. And, oh, there's more bedrock down there. I didn't even notice that. Make that cobble, of course. We can't be using bedrock in our builds. Uh, over here, for the top of the cupola, we want to have our uh, stone brick stairs again. Right side up now. And then on top of that, of course, you know the drill, upside down. Cobblestone stairs there to represent our acanthus leaves. Uh, now, it's probably way too late to mention this, but um, in newer versions, I actually favor using polished andesite instead of uh, the stone bricks for the acanthus leaves here. Like, instead of all, all the stone brick stairs uh, in this building, I would probably convert to polished andesite if I had to do it over again. Uh, but unfortunately, you know, I've got like 1.12 to do this stuff in, so d I don't have those. Uh, and um, I didn't, that's not a, a new thing that I thought about until lately. Otherwise, I would have mentioned it at the start. Uh, but I, I say I mentioned that because um, uh, if you want to do use different uh, materials at different stages of the building, that's perfectly, perfectly free for you to do. So here, of course, we're finishing off our canvas leaves with, uh, you guessed it, more upside down. Stone brick stairs, of course, we have to just switch to squish them all together right here at the side. Uh, they go okay in the middle here, and I just made a, a straight stone brick right there in the middle of that. Uh, and uh, details for, for in the middle here. Uh, I didn't really finish this uh, that well. 
on the interior. This is one of those uh, this is one of those sections since there wasn't access to it, it was more of an afterthought. So if you want to dress up the uh, top of the cupola a little bit nicer, make it your personal office or something, do feel free to uh, change whatever you see inside there. Uh, so along the top here, we are now doing, uh, we finished our Corinthian columns again, but we are now doing, you guessed it, the entablature. And we're doing that, of course, upside down, stone brick stairs, and die right, right on top of that. Like so. And what, that's what, uh, a 5, a 2, a 1, a 2, and a 5. And I'll give you a view of, of that after, on this uh, section over here. Uh, so again, you want to do another layer of diorite. And then for the cornice, you then want to do our stone bricks. And this pattern there. And uh, a little, little view of that here. Just a, just a tiny little golden dome here at the top, right there. And I think it just has gold for the, uh, for the nine blocks at the top there. Uh, so we finished off the entablature, so we're now doing our, our roof, which is, of course, a little, a very small dome, our little, our last little dome we're going to be making. And, of course, you see the dial right here, so we're going to be building these little decorative fennels on the top here. Uh, but on the, uh, on the corners here, you then want to just put uh, uh, cobble half slabs in the same pattern, 5, 2, 1, 1, 2, and 5, right there. And then behind that, you want to build uh, build this pattern here, and just fill the whole thing in with cobble, or or uh, conversely, you can just leave it hollow, like so. Of course, we get a little bit of uh, cut copper has made its reappearance for the final time in the building, like so. Next phase over here. We are in the home stretch now, finally. This, is, uh, had, this has been one of the uh, most uh, difficult and advanced tutorials for a building I've tried to do just because of all the details. I, I was concerned that, uh, that perhaps my format wasn't going to be able to accommodate it because the, the building is far too large to do block by block, obviously. That'd take the rest of my life to do. Uh, but, um, but, but, e but even with my more abbreviated style here of the, the the slices and the phases and everything i was worried it might just be too big but no i think that's probably going to be the hippodrome that comes after this that everyone has been asking for yes i am going to release the hippodrome at long last uh but that's one of the reasons i want to go ahead and get this done today this video and the tutorial series for the cathedral so i can start working on the tutorial for the hippodrome slash Circus Maximus. Well, I think I've given you a good enough view of that. And let's go on to this last little bit over here. Pretty easy top section. And we just have a, a very top spire that we are building now, right there. More details for our top spire. Like so, we do have a little detail of uh, some hidden torches and some carved uh, stone bricks right there. And then for the last time in the building, we're using just a little bit of gold here at the top for the spire. Of course, we have, a, have, we have to have a nice pointy spire at the top of the building. I mean, it's a, it's a cathedral. It would be really disappointing if it just, you know, randomly stopped. Of course, here we have this little section with uh, gold, like so. Very simple pattern. Uh, it's meant to be a little a golden orb. Uh, but, you know, it, it's so small. You know, Minecraft. You know, that, that, that's as orb-like as we can get. And then just uh, double... Um, uh, cobblestone stairs stacked on top of each other like so. And then uh, this is uh, exactly the same thing we just took a look at. So that, that was a mistake in my slicing. 
Now let's go on to this one, where we put just a little bit more of gold, four cobblestone walls here. And just at the end here, let's come back to the start. And, okay, yeah, I thought that the uh, the spire was different. And the, the reference model. So the, the, the one at the end was a, uh, an earlier version. Now this is the one we want to build at the end here. So we want to build, that's going to be what, two blocks there? And what, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven blocks of gold, and then place a block of glowstone here. And then three blocks of gold on either side of that. Three blocks of gold on the top. And then one torch there. And that will give you your giant golden cross on top of your cathedral. Uh, which, will, which will bring you up to date. And your mega giant cathedral build will finally be complete. So I hope you have enjoyed the tutorial for the Roman Cathedral. This is one of the, the biggest, most complex buildings I've ever, I've ever tried to do. Not just as a, as a tutorial, but also just to design and make myself. So I, I hope you like it and enjoy it in your world for a long, long time to come. And do remember, everything, of course, is available for download in the video description. In case anything I said today was unclear, you need to take a look at it for yourself. You can, of course, do that. Uh, and with, with that, at long last, I want to thank you very, very, very much for watching. And I will see you next time.